right, today we're going to take a look at and talk about how to use our WordPress site, which is uh, a blog site that we're going to use throughout the class uh, to make a place for you to do um, writing. Uh, and it's part of the writing across the cur curriculum um, and having students write in all classes, not just English classes. So first of all, to get there, you open up uh, the internet and go to blog.nationaltrail.us and it will redirect you to the actual site, which is wordpress.nationaltrail.k12.oh.us. Um, that's a mouthful. It's easier to just say blog.nationaltrail.us and have it redirect. Now, this is the home site. Every class has the ability to have a WordPress site. So this is kind of the local launch place where everybody logs in and gets to um, the individual class ones from here. If other classes have one, uh, they are, may or may not. In fact, they don't have uh, launch buttons right here. Um, but this is where you log in. So you should have already gotten an invite to um, become an author in your site. You have to click on that to, to, to accept the invite. But then you go here to log in. So when you click log in on the bottom left hand side, uh, it comes up and that's just your National Trail username and password. Um, the same one you log on to your PC with every day. And once you log in, you're into WordPress. Now, in your case, uh, you're not going to see this when you come in. You're going to go to, you're going to be coming to the site and then you're going to click on here and this is our class page, NTIT Tech. Uh, and it's where students and myself and my interns do blog posts related to both class activities and um, actual IT practices and things as well. It's where I put all my personal blogs for things and it's where you guys will put yours. Now, this doesn't ever come down. It's up forever. It's open to the internet and it's open to Google. Many times uh, people will go when they're doing research on something and end up at our blog post, which is why there's some restrictions on things that you guys need to do when you do your blog posts. Now, if you're in to NTIT Tech and you wanna make a blog post and that's what we're gonna go through, uh, I'll show you how to do that. First of all, this is uh, blogging, and I've got an example um, page that uh, I'm going to go ahead and take us to. So this link is in um, the explanation uh, that this video goes along with. This is a, uh, a student's post that uh, I tweaked just a little bit, um, and it's a good example of uh, really a good post. It goes through, it reads very much like English. It's got um, graphics in there that if uh, you wanted to look, look at a bigger image, you could click on that and see the bigger image. Uh, because graphics don't have to be huge. Most of the time, people put in these big, huge pictures that just take up space. And the point is to be brief on a blog post not to expound. It's the opposite of the five-page paper that you might get in English. Um, you're trying to be succinct, factual, uh, give uh, the information that you want and get out because blog posts are uh, online reading uh, that you guys probably use all the time. But the last thing you want to do when you go there is spend tons of time reading through tons of stuff to find the one thing that you were trying to find the answer to. So our blog posts are supposed to be written as reviews of things that we did research on in class uh, in a way that makes it sound like you actually know what you're talking about. So this one is on the Intel Core i5-9600KF, uh, which is a CPU that this student did research on. Uh, it talks about it in plain English. Uh, it's got outside links to go to look to other sites that support what they said on there. Uh, it's got links on pictures that go to outside places to actually see the item that the student is talking about in there. But there, you don't have to put those in there. They're just embedded with the pictures. Um, and it's pretty straightforward English. It shouldn't be something that you couldn't give to your mom or dad to read. 
uh, that would make any sense to them. They should be able to read it and go, oh, that's interesting. Maybe some of it might be over their head uh, if they're not a computer person, but it's English. And at the end of it, there's always supposed to be a works cited for the places that you used. And there always should be this disclaimer, note this review is part of a classroom project. That is part of the rubric grade. It has to be on every single one of your posts. The last thing I want someone to do is someone else to come here and buy a processor based solely on your fictitious blog post. Now, if uh, you actually own the, this processor, if you actually use this processor, uh, then that's different. And in fact, you can say, hey, I actually own this one, Mr. Poole, when I did this write up. Is it okay if I don't put that on there? It's not saying, no, this is not true. It's just letting them know that it's part of a classroom project. Um, so that is a nice, succinct, well-written blog post. And that's what you're shooting for. Something that makes it sound like you know what you're talking about, gives good references, has nice pictures in there. And let's go into how we do that, okay? So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make a new post. Right up here, we see new post. And this is what the editor looks like in WordPress. Now you can cut and paste from anywhere else to post into WordPress. You don't have to write it in WordPress if you don't want to. You can see all these tools are in here and if you don't know what they are, if you hover over it, uh, you can find out. So let's go from the beginning. So titles should be short and succinct. You saw that the title ends up being really big and it, it automatically becomes a hyperlink to that article. Um, when we come to the post, the site itself, NTIT Tech, you can see it has every post back in time is still on there. You can see this one's down here. Um, and the links take you straight to that article so then you're just reading on it and gives people the ability to comment on your post as well. So, uh, test post, I'll put in there. So that's what the words are gonna be up there. Now down in here is our editing area and we can obviously do words, we can do different fonts, we can use bullets, we can use lists, we can uh, left indent, right, uh, I'm sorry, left align, right align, center, make links. Let's say, uh, and I wanna show you how to do a couple of these things. I don't need to show you how to type. Oh, I do have one thing that I should bring up on um, typing and copying pasted from uh, another website. And I said this in uh, on the rubric or in the other instruction, you should never copy and paste from another website. If I want to use um, information from a specific site, and I'm gonna go to Newig, Oop, if I can spell it. and just pull up a, a, uh, an item and pretend like I'm gonna use that one, okay? So if I wanna use the information from this site, the one thing I don't wanna do is, and I'm gonna go, the, uh, let's go down here to the specs. I don't wanna copy specs straight from here and have the risk of them being hyperlinked or getting their, um, fonts and things from them. So whenever you copy information, I'm gonna say I'm gonna use this right here. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy and I'm always gonna use Notepad to paste into and then I'm gonna copy and paste it or cut and paste it from Notepad into WordPress. So I'm gonna take that information and I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna now put it in WordPress. By doing that, did I? just mess up my Z. Okay, try it again. I think I hit something on my, by doing that, I remove all of the special formatting, hyperlinks, everything. I turn it into clean text, and then I format the way I want to in WordPress. I don't go and try to copy their formatting. Okay, so I've got this information, and I'm going to go and say, hey, this is a list, so I'm going to uh, bold that and I'm going to underline it. Ooh, I'm going to use a big heading there. 
Oh, not on everything, just on that one part. There we go. I got that bolted. And then I'm going to bullet this, so I'm going to use the little bullet button there. You know what? Here's what I got wrong there. I'm hitting enter. And I'm going to un. I'm going to indent this this one further. Ooh, I can change and make the circle serve too. And un undo this one. There we go. So I've got that and I've just added that so it looks like the performance. Now, if I wanted to hyperlink to somewhere else, for instance, I want to hyperlink to this page uh, here, um, all I have to do is go, let me close that so I stop doing that. All I have to do is go and say, okay, I want to, I want to link this word to that thing. So I hit that link button, insert a link, and I'm going to hit these link options as I do it. So now I'm going to post there. I always want you guys to make it open the link in the new tab. That's because the last thing I want to have happen is them to leave your blog post if they click on it and look at it. So now I always make them open link in a new tab. I'm going to add that link. And now this becomes a hyperlink to go and read about this performance or to go to that page if I wanted to. So that's how we add a hyperlink. If I hit this, I break or remove that link. And let's go and take a look at what it looks like by hitting this preview button up over here. And now if I click on that, you see it opens up in a new page and it goes right to that. So that's a preview of what we have so far, which is not that great, right? Um, as we're working on this project, I can hit save draft anytime and all I've done is save it. No one else can see it until I publish it. So when I'm done and ready to submit this project, I have to make sure I publish it because I am not going in to look at uh, things that are not published. I'm only going to grade things that you publish. Once it's published, it's open to Google, it's open to the internet, it's open to anybody who's looking up something on this thing that Google search engine might bring you to. And we have done searches before where student projects are on the top four or five items on the search list. So Google will find and, and, do you, and add your thing to the search list. So in fact, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this is the Western Digital Blue NAN. Let's change the review. And I'm going to save draft again. Okay, now let's talk about how to add pictures as well. Now, to add the best pictures, we don't just copy and paste, we save those pictures. So when I click on here, I'm going to right click and say save image as to download that picture onto, I'm just going to put it on my desktop right now. We'll just toss it right on top of my desktop. So now I've got a high quality picture of that. If I want to get these other pictures as well, I could. That one's good enough to put in my post. So I'm going to put that at the beginning of my post. And I'm going to insert a picture now. Now, to do those things, you can see if I hover over these things, I don't see that down here. That's text color, special characters. It's up here with media. So I'm going to add media, and how did that just show up there? Because I just went there, or because I just downloaded it? I have no idea how that just showed up there on my list in my media library. The other thing, if it's not there, I'm going to hit upload files. I'm going to hit select files, and then I'll upload that to my desktop. There's that picture that's uploading. Um, so you can see I can alternate text is so that if someone's using a screen reader they can't see clearly, um, I can put WD blue drive image if I want to say what that is. Uh, there could be a caption if you're hovering over it or description. I'm not going to have any of those things on there. Alignment's going to be center. I'm going to link to the file. In other words, if I click on it, I'm going to link to the file. 
But what I'm going to put in there, if you look, you can put the full size image or down to a thumbnail of the image. I'm going to say thumbnail and I'm going to say insert into post. And somehow I did it twice. There we go. You know what? I'm going to make sure I only got what I wanted. There we go. Insert into post. There we go. Now, I can still resize this and make it smaller if I want to just have a picture of it. I'm going to put it over on the side and I'm going to hit save draft and I'm going to hit preview so we can see what it looks like. So we've got this little picture that's next to there. If I click on the picture, I get a full size uh, picture of it. And that's, I didn't get it in, in another um, page. Not really what I wanted. Let's see if I go to edit. There we go, open link in a new tab. That's down there, I did not see that on it before. I'm gonna hit update, save draft, preview. Now when I click on there, it opened up a new page so I don't lose my post when I'm in there. Okay, so that's how to add pictures. That's how to add text. The font things are, are fairly straightforward that you can go in there. The last thing is if you had a YouTube image, that's just right there to add a YouTube. If you wanna embed a YouTube video in there, the directions are fairly self-explanatory. Now, again, when you're done, you should have uh, the things that are followed through in the rubric. This video is just to show you the basics of how to do that. Oh, oh, I missed one. They also go into categories and if I look down on this side, see these categories? This is a, a hard drive review. So I would take it out of uncategorized and I put it in hard drive reviews or memory reviews or motherboard reviews, whichever one it falls into the one that you have. So that, I'm gonna save draft again in preview. Basically see how it says it's part of hard drive reviews. If I click on hard drive reviews right now, it'll show all the hard drive reviews that have, wow, is that coincidence? That is, oh, that I ended up with the exact same hard drive that we were talking about. Um, anyway, if I go to hard drive reviews, I'll see all the hard drive reviews that have ever been done in my class uh, since I redid the uh, server anyway. So you wanna make sure that you've categorized it correctly under hard drive reviews uh, so that it shows up in the right place. But that's how to add pictures, how to add text, uh, how to save it as you're working on it. And when you're done, you just hit publish and then that will be posted on our site and available for me to grade, you to share the link to, and other people to come and find and make comments on uh, your WordPress blog post.